Thank you for tuning in, and thank you to our sponsors, personal injury attorney Nelson Gavorka. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Manu Kakopian, and I have very happy to be joined by super featherweight champion Alicia Bumgarner. Alicia, you're preparing to return from a year and a half layoff against Delphine Pursun on September 27 at the Trillith Studios in Fayetteville, Georgia, in an all-ladies fight card that will be streaming for free on Brinks TV and Fubo Sports. Alicia, you've had quite an eventful series of events in your life since we last saw you in the ring beating Christina Ladartu. What's new? You know, everything is new. I, I'm in a fresh new skin. I, I've i done a lot of inner, you know, reflection and I'm happy. I'm blessed. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to fight next Friday against a great opponent like Delphine. So in your last fight, a drug test found that you took a banned substance. However, after a lengthy investigation by the WBC, you were found not guilty. Uh, what's been the most challenging part of this entire PED controversy as you fought to repair your name and your reputation? Yeah, so the most challenging thing was I was in this by myself. We don't have a union in boxing. I literally am a great saver, so I knew this was going to take some money to really showcase you know, to to not just the sanctioning bodies, to the commission, to everybody, to the world to say, hey, I've always been a clean athlete. And, you know, and, the, and, it, and it takes steps to literally be to a point where it's like, OK, they can look at it. They can say, you know what, she's guilty or she's not guilty. And I've done a lot of research. It, it took over, what, five months. To, to really put all this paperwork together. And again, I'm, I'm happy that the WBC, all of the sanctioning bodies, the commission in Michigan were able to look at this thoroughly because these things happen and things need to be taken serious because not everybody's cheating. I don't, I don't, I didn't have to cheat to, to make it in life. You know, I've, I've always proved to advocate for a clean sport. And so here we are today as the undisputed world champion defending all of my titles next Friday. And again, continuing to asking for a clean sport, asking to be drug tested on each one of these fights that um, I have upcoming. Obviously performance enhancing drugs are prevalent within the sport. We see it with the high, uh, high marquee fighters like Ryan Garcia. And then we see it on the lower side as well too, with some other people. How difficult has it been for you just to deal with the criticism and the speculation that comes along with the process? I mean, it's it's unfortunate. You know, I can only speak on my case on the other fighters that, you know, that's their own doing. I can't speak for them. But for me, you know, I'm already, I was already judged. You know, I've already, you know, the way my body already is set up from – being a natural athlete with natural with a natural build, I was already looked at as if I was already on PEDs, right? And then I'm also beating these girls at the at the highest level. So it was just I felt like I already had a target on my back. I already felt that that way. I already felt that I had to keep proving myself. And again, when the adversity came with this positive PED, I again overcame that and and showcased that. You know, I've always been a clean athlete, and I think it's important for people to understand that we're all human. Like, we're not just pieces of trash that you can just sit on the internet and talk about. You People don't actually know the the the, the detailed parts. You guys only know so much. And and I know I, one day I hope to tell everybody the, the story about how everything went down. But all I can say is I had a great team. And, you know, the, a, a great circle of support to, to get me through this trial. Yeah. And un unfortunately, the, the hits just kept coming for you outside of this ordeal as well, too. You lost your father. You were separately dealing with a stalker who was after you. Like mentally, how would you describe yourself over the last 15 months? Hmm. Sorry, it's personal. Listen, I, I've been able to keep keep my faith. I think that's important that um, people have to understand is I kept my faith. I believed in who I was, um, who I am as a person. And I feel like God blesses those who are honest. I believe God blesses those who um, 
understands the the assignment. My calling is much bigger than boxing. I just happen to do a great job in the ring and become a world champion. But I've been able to keep the faith. You know, when 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 you're at the top, you're gonna have adversity come. And again, I, I have a great circle of friends. I have a great family who supports me, who loves me. You know, boxing is not my in all be all. And I and I want people to understand that like this is something that I do. This is something that I love to do. And um it's been it's been very challenging. But one thing about boxing, it's it's kept my mind sharp, it's kept my mind um focused because I have the opportunity to fight a great opponent and come out with a great victory, a great statement, and just to keep showing the world why I have why I, why I've always been an overcomer, why that I've always been an underdog who's been given the biggest challenge, and why I will continue to keep fighting for people who don't have a voice, people who been, you know, um, maybe ridiculed on the internet, getting your name dragged on the internet, like things like that, and. I'm just happy to be here, really. I'm just, I'm very happy just to be in this position today to speak to people and be like, hey, I made it through. And you have the perfect opportunity now to officially reintroduce yourself against Pursun. Uh, you've took the wheel of your career and uh, partnered uh, to bring this fight uh, to Brinks TV, Fubo Sports, and started your own promotional company in the midst of all this. Uh, how will a big win against Pursun set you up for the super fights that you're looking for? Yeah, a fight with Delphine is, I think, great. I think a lot of people have this um, fight stuck in their mind because of the the two fights that she had with Katie Taylor, right? She's a, a great opponent. She's a veteran in the sport. And a fighter like Alicia Bumgarner against Delphine is going to really show the magnitude. It's really going to show what does this year and a, a year and a half look like? What is the things that she's been through? What is this going to look like? How is she going to perform? Everybody is looking at this fight to say, who is Alicia Bumgarner? Once again, you know, we, we've been at this stage before when I got the phone call to fight Terry Harper to be the underdog, to go over there to fight Michaela and beat her. Like, it doesn't stop. So I think this is just another victory fight to just show, like, yo, you're either going to get behind her or you're just going to keep talking about her. It's just one or the other. We talk about the setbacks a little earlier, but let's talk about some of the triumphs you've had in your career. Terry Harper, Michaela Mayer beating both of those ladies. How have those two wins changed your life? Those wins changed my life because it showed that I stay diligent to my work. It, it showed the discipline, the dedication. I started boxing at the age of eight. I've been able to gain so much wisdom um, as an athlete, as a woman in business to understand what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. And yes, I've been through, you know, some trials, but those all taught me to be in this position today, to know what it is to have ownership, to know what it is to be vocal about what's wrong and what's right. And, and again, to be in a space where I can have, you know, freedom. You know, I'm a free agent after this fight. I think every fighter wants to get to a point where they can, you know, negotiate a better deal for themselves. You know, I've been in some pretty bad contract deals, but, um, you know, we're, we're at the end of it and I can't wait to see what the future holds. So a lot of great things are happening in the midst of what seems to be chaos. What does this mean for your relationship with Matchroom and Eddie Hearn moving forward? Are, do you plan on just going the unrestricted free agent route, taking fights one at a time, or do you want to go towards another promotional company as well, too? I think it's important um, as a fighter to understand all of your, your options, right? I love Matchroom. I think they've done a great job so far with my career. I think that we can build something even bigger than what we already had started with in the beginning. And it's just important that you you build these relationships um, in making sure that the fighter is taken care of. Again, boxing isn't forever. And with this last, you know, go around, I feel like the last three, four years I can give this sport, I want super fights. I want to be able to showcase the skill, the highest level of pedigree, who I am as an athlete and as a woman in business. So 
again, I'm looking forward to it. Honestly, you know, we, we've talked already. So the number one thing is to get this fight and, and get the victory and continue negotiating, see what, what's best for Alicia. You've been fighting at 130 pounds your entire career, but all of the super fights I'm sure you envision are against the, the ladies that are outside of your division. But the, the two closest ones are Amanda Serrano and Katie Taylor, who will be who are fighting near your weight class. Why are you confident you could beat them both? I'm confident because I believe in myself. I believe in the skill. I I just look so damn good. I, I don't know what else to say. Um, I'm sorry. Um, did it come up? Okay. I'm just, I'm, I'm confident in my skill. I, every day I see the progression, even with this camp, I look completely different. I'm stronger physically, mentally, and it just gets better. So I could only imagine what I'm going to look like when I do have the opportunity to fight a Katie or Amanda. I'm just, I'm the top of the top. I'm the top of the food chain. So they have some unfinished business. They're going to be fighting November 15. Who do you think wins their rematch? That's a great question. I know we saw the first fight. It, it was very close. I think Katie Taylor still pull, pulls it out, honestly. That's my opinion. You're at 130 pounds right now. Uh, are you open to moving up or down at this point? I'm willing to move up. I think I'm, I would be a strong 135 pounder. Again, I make weight easily at 130, but 35 is right there. So moving up would be, would be very beneficial. Let's talk about the more improbable jump in weight, which is of course, Clarissa Shields. You've been out each other's necks in recent months. Uh, she last competed at heavyweight, but what needs to happen for you to f fight Clarissa? Take me through the details that you need on your side. You know, it's really simple. Like I've said, and I've always said, I agree to fight Clarissa at 147. She agreed to it. You know, there's there's proof that she said this. Again, I think Clarissa is at a stage of her life where she wants things to be easier for her. That's why she moved up to heavyweight, you know, and good for her. Kudos to her. But like I said, 147 is what I stated. And that's where we could fight. If she don't want it, she don't want it. But I just know in, in terms of my career and where I'm going, People are watching my fights because those the, the competitions at the 130 to 47 range. So that that's where I plan to um, reign at. Is that your ceiling 147? You wouldn't be open to going up uh, more than that. You know, right now it doesn't make sense to go up to 54. Again, each each time you gain another weight class, it, you have to be smart about these things, right? I'm not just someone who just jumps into something that doesn't make sense. It has to make sense for my body. If my nutritionist is saying, hey, you know what, we can make 154, then we'll do it. I'm not opposed to saying no. I just want to make sure I'm doing things correctly and right. Why do you believe your skills are more superior than Clarissa's who, uh, you know, she has the self-built uh, title of the quote. Why do you believe your skills are more superior it shows it shows in the in the ring if you turn on one of my fights and turn on one of her fights you'll see the the sweet science of what boxing looks like the jab the right hand the power the combinations like i just know that i put i put it way together better it's it's a better package deal over this way and again people may say say that about her but i just know who i am and what people like and they love watching alicia Bumgardner. You've sized her up in person several times. What is your assessment of her just face to face? She my size and I'm bigger. As a fighter, we're competitors. You know, I don't see nobody as a threat. I've been doing this sport for a very long time. You know, I've competed in wrestling. I've competed with men. All that just builds the confidence as I am as a woman. So again, I, I don't, I'm not threatened by another woman. So just as much as she thinks she can beat me, I know that I can beat her. So that's just what it is. You're both from Detroit, Michigan. This would be surely an incredible promotion. Do you guys have a history of bad blood towards each other just coming up in the same region or has this just developed over time? I would say this developed over time. I think when you, you know, you're at the the top of your pinnacle of your career, you know, we 
you know, the question gets thrown around when the best is the best, who's going to fight each other. Right. So it, I think it's just one of those times where, you know, we want to make these big super fights. And, you know, for me, it was only about the money and, and making a fight between Clarissa and I, but it got personal. And because it got personal, you know, as a, as a smart businesswoman, you would think someone would be like, you know what, this would be great. But, you know, that's, that's not the case. Not the case. So. So 147 or bust, you've made your point clear. Uh, obviously, Clarissa, I'm sure, has other ideas. But you you have to get past pursuing first. What does the perfect night at the office look like for you on September 27? Going home early. Going home early. So, um, you know, the, the work shift is not from 1 to 10. It's probably 1 to 6 or less. So um, that's what I'm what I'm hoping for. And again, it's going to be a great fight. I cannot wait for people just to see how much I've improved um, on this layoff. And you recently had a sit down with Shaquille O'Neal. He said he wanted to grab the mic and wrap you into the ring for your walk. Is, is that the plan for September 27? It's not, you know, the, this fight for me is, is a cool, cool, calm and collective fight. Like even just the ring walk. I know people look forward to the ring walk again. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm just happy to be here. And when you're, I'm, I'm just happy, man. And it's just coming into the arena is going to be like going into the sanctuary. You know, this is for my dad. It's just been a lot going on and I'm just taking all of that energy, love and, um, hardship just to really put forth towards this fight. Like my focus is just getting this fight and just showcasing why I am who I am. Certainly you are dedicating this fight to your father, who obviously is the reason you got into boxing. Uh, what would that win mean to you and your family and your family's legacy? Oh, man, the win would be amazing. I think again, with my family, just being the biggest supporters and knowing what I've been through in these last, you know, year and a half and some months, it would just make them feel so good because they know how hard I really work every day in order to, to be who I am. And, you know, so, and, and to take care of my family, like this is not just for me this is for my family as well. So it's just, it's going to be a blessing. We're going to, we're definitely going to celebrate.